Hello and welcome to the video on Lightning Forms. In this video we're going to take a look at the modern version of Lightning Forms so we can customize modern list forms whilst still keeping a responsive design. So first of all I'm going to start off with a brand new list so I'm going to go through to add an app inside this site and we're going to create a contacts list. So in the uh, list of lists we'll choose the contacts list here. And we're choosing the contacts list initially because it's got a lot of fields, which can sometimes be an issue when we are trying to display lots of different fields with inside a mobile device or also with inside a desktop version of, uh, of a SharePoint list. So as you can see, when we go into the contacts list, we can now go through and create a new item and we get this new side panel appearing where we can scroll down and see lots of different fields and the number of fields here could be a little bit overwhelming for some of the users so what we want to do is change some of the layout but also improve some of the business logic behind that list form uh, but before we do that what i'm also going to do is go through and create another list which is going to be a custom list so i'm going to go through and add an app and this will uh, like i say be a custom list and we're going to call this one orders so i'll create my orders list with inside the same site. Okay, so we now have contacts and we have orders and with inside the orders list, we're just gonna go through and add a couple of columns just for a short demo. So uh, in here, we uh, will add a new column, which will be a single line of text called product. And I'm also going to go through and add a currency column called value. Okay, and uh, going back to our contacts list. I'm also going to add an additional column in here and that is going to be called total value. So we'll, uh, we'll select currency and call this one total value. There we go. And let's choose save on that. Okay, so we've got our, our new uh, column in here. So since we uh, now have that, let's start to customize the list form. So what I want to do, like I say, is add a little bit of logic and improve the layout a little bit. So we're going to launch the Lightning Forms customization dialog, which you'll see at the top of every single uh, action pane inside every single list. And in there, what we can see is we've got three different forms that make up this list. We've got the new form, uh, which is obviously used for creating new items. We have the edit form used for editing existing items. And we also have the display forms, uh, which is used for uh, displaying the items. It's uh, the read-only version. So what we're going to do is first of all, customize the new form. So I'll do that by clicking onto the customize button. And we are now inside the form design experience. So what we can do in here, first of all, is to choose some different layouts. So in the top left hand corner, we have the form settings and I can choose that initial layout uh, going for a small side panel, medium side panel, large side panel or full screen uh, side panel. But don't worry, because these are responsive, like I say, so uh, this is just the initial size. But as you increase or decrease the size of your screen, um, Lightning Forms is fully responsive, so all of the fields on there will remain modern and they'll also change in their dimensions. So I'm going to stick with a medium form uh, for this one. That's absolutely fine. So we'll save that. Uh, but what I do want to do is get rid of some of the clutter where we just got this great big long list of fields. So at the top here, I can go through and add a component. Now, those components are the existing fields that make up this current list, so I can just drop those onto the form. So uh, things like the total value, which is the column that we added uh, a little moment ago. Um, but before I do that, I'm just going to scroll down a little bit further to the controls section uh, where we can see tabs. We can also see buttons and toolbars and rich text fields uh, and so on. And these uh, rich text fields, they actually allow us to add uh, text or images directly to the form itself. So if you wanted to have a header or instructions on how to fill out the form, that would be the ideal component in order to add to your forms. And what we'll come back to later on inside this video is also how we can go through and add sublists. So there's our orders list. So what I'm gonna do is actually embed that orders list on this form so that you can fill out 
a new customer and the orders all on the same screen uh, not having to go to two different lists so uh, as we uh, go to the tabs let's uh, let's create a tab here so we've got uh, our first tab just called new tab uh, now I actually want um, two tabs on this form so I'm going to go through and add another one uh, we can do that just by clicking that plus on the right hand side there and uh, we can change the name of the tab just by double clicking and over typing so we'll have uh, customer details and in here we'll also have something like a billing address or whatever we want to call it okay so we've uh, we've got the two tabs working uh, we could also go through and set icons for that and so on just by clicking into that icon there so these are icons that we can uh, get from the recent images they could be icons uh, or something that we've already uploaded so with the customer details tab selected all I need to do is drag these existing fields into that tabbed area so I've got the last name here uh, we can drag the first name obviously into that one as well as the full name and we'll also have uh, email address and company and just make sure that we've got all these under the uh, the relevant tab so we'll have business phone in there as well okay I'm just going to go through and delete a few of these ones just to save a bit of time in the video uh, so we can go through and move any fields that we don't want especially fax number uh, let's get rid of that and now we're on to the address so what I'm going to do is go through and select the address tab and drag in the address fields so we get those stored in the appropriate place okay and we've got web page which I'll just remove for now uh, and in fact notes let's drop that onto another tab so we can go through and create a third tab called notes and that would be a great place to go through and add any notes okay and that leaves us with our total value attachments which I'm not too concerned about let's remove attachments and I'll leave total value at the bottom there uh, so we can always see the total value of the orders so we've got a slightly improved layout we've got uh, a few different tabs and obviously I could spend a little bit more time on this uh, what I want to show you next is how we can perform some calculations to add some logic so in here we've got the full name field and if you've worked with the contacts list before you'll know that this full name field isn't calculated now sure enough we could go through and resolve that easily uh, by customizing the field just using SharePoint out of the box um, but it also gives me a great uh, example where we go through and actually add some expressions uh, because our expressions are not just limited to some simple calculations uh, we have uh, the ability to control all sorts of things such as um, when the field is visible so it might be that I want to hide the field um, based upon a certain condition being met and uh, let me just show you some of these things these are all covered in the training videos as well uh, so I'm just going to point out some of these things but one thing we might want to do uh, as an example let's say we have uh, an approve button uh, we could hide that from anybody that is not an approver um, or maybe we've got a salary field I could hide that based on the fact that you know, are you a manager or not uh, and so on so what we can see is all these different fields that make up the contacts list I'm working with are available so I can use those as part of my expression to build the condition uh, but I also have contextual objects and those contextual objects give me the ability to look at my environment such as the current site the current form the current page uh, the current user etc uh, so if I expand the current user we can get to some of the profile properties such as email address uh, there's a the full profile in here so as I mentioned if you're a manager uh, we could hide a field from you I'm sorry hide a field if you're not manager um, we could also uh, check if you're a member of a certain SharePoint group so if you're not a member of the approvers SharePoint group then don't show the button uh, and so on so uh, in order to add these functions you just double click them and as you can see in here we can just add the name of the group that we want to check so I could put in there the word approvers and then if you're not a member of that group you won't see the field okay so we've got that sort of thing that we can do I'm just going to cancel that one for the, uh, for the visible property likewise for the enabled so we could in this case maybe show an approve button but the button you can't click it's disabled uh, unless you're a manager or an approver we have initial which is like default uh, we also have calculated which I'm going to do in a moment we have required for validation 
purposes and then other validation rules as well and validation text um, should the validation rule not be met. So these are some of the different expressions that we can use on a um, single line of text field. Uh, if I go into the calculated, what we're going to do is just simply take the uh, the first name. So I double click onto that and we're going to say plus a space plus last name, which happens to be the title field. So we've got our expression built and uh, we can also test that as well uh, if we wanted to. And uh, you'll notice in here as well that we don't just get to work with the different fields, uh, but we can also work with uh, code as well. So if you wanted to build something more advanced using JavaScript, uh, then you can also do that as well. And uh, we do get um, some help as well. So as we uh, make typos, if we reference a field that doesn't exist or make any syntax errors, uh, that's also going to be flagged up to us to uh, help us along our way. So um, that's our calculated uh, expression so I can okay that uh, and that will now automatically calculate my full name. Um, if we scroll down a little bit further uh, what I want to do next is go through and add onto this below the total value the sub list. So I'm going to go through and add that orders list that we created so I'll select that. So we now have the orders list embedded on the form and Currently, this orders list is a completely separate list to the contact list. There's no relation between the two, um, but what I can do is select to use this as a sub item. And uh, in order to use it as a sub item, it needs to have a lookup field. So some, uh, a field that's almost working like a foreign key in a relational database. This is going to be looking up from the, uh, the one side so we can relate the orders to the relevant customer. Now, I don't have a lookup field. I've not created one. Uh, if I did, there'd be one in the drop down that I could select, but because I don't have one, I can just hit this plus icon here, and that is going to create a field for me called lookup to contacts. So I'll add that. That field now exists, and now my orders can be related to the customers. So simple as that. So uh, we'll choose OK. Um, we now have the embedded orders list on the form. Uh, what I do want to see is if we place multiple orders per customer, I want to have a running total of the total value of orders that have been made. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to, again, hit the configure expressions icon, go to the calculated field, and we'll select the uh, expression builder. And in here, you can see that sublists is another node inside this tree view that I can expand. I can now see the orders sublist, and we can go through and take that value column that I created, and here's some useful functions that I can use, uh, such as some average, count, min, and max. So I'm just going to double click onto sum there because that's what we want to do. We don't want to total up the value of all the orders. Uh, so I'll choose that, save it, and there's my expression again. Uh, choose OK, and now we should have that running total as we place new orders per customer. OK, the, uh, the final thing that I'm going to show inside this video is uh, the actions. Now, I can actually go through and add a new button, a new action button. So as we uh, scroll down to the controls, notice you can just click onto this uh, button with actions, and that launches this action builder, where I can string together a whole bunch of different actions to occur. Um, and uh, there's different action types, as you can see. So we can do things like send email, close a form, delete a list item, uh, start a workflow, uh, et cetera. And uh, I could go through and build a, a new one. But what I'm going to do instead, if I just remove that new action button that I created, I'm going to customize the way the save button uh, works on this form. So currently, the save button saves and redirects back to the list. Uh, so we can see that if we. Um, just simply go into this configure actions on the save button. So there's the save form, and then we do a close form. Now I'm going to just get it to do something else. Uh, so I'm going to go through and add an action. And uh, that action has appeared before the close form automatically, because obviously the close form is going to lose the context of, uh, of the form once it is closed. That new action is going to be a send email. We could make that action based on a condition but uh, we'll just send one anyway. So I'm just going to come down to the send email action. 
and we're going to send it from the current user. So uh, I can get to that using the function wizard again. So as I get down to the contextual objects, let's expand the user and um, we'll go to the email. So it's user.email. So that's my current user's email address. We're going to send it to the email address of the person inside the contacts list. So there's the uh, email field that makes up the form. Uh, we have a subject. So hello customer. And we could, of course, do some concatenation there to, uh, to address it to the actual customer itself. Um, so uh, in here, we could say dear first name, etc., cetera, and, and so on. But I'm just going to say uh, email to say hi to my customer. OK, so that's my uh, email that's going to be sent as we hit save. And then I'm going to add a, another quick action as well, just to give some feedback to the current user. So when I do a show message, uh, the message is going to be a status and we'll just say success as the title. We'll display it for a, a few seconds and we're just going to say uh, customer created. OK, so um, we've got a save form, send email, show message, close form as our list of actions behind that save button. So uh, the next thing we'll do is just uh, actually go through and save the form. So I'll hit save form at the top there. So it says configuration saved. We can OK that. And now I can navigate to test the form. So we can go to the contacts list. And let's give it a go. So I'll create a new item. And here's our new form. So you can see here we've got uh, three different tabs, the customer details, the billing address, and the notes. And uh, as we fill this out, so I'll put in my details, so Lonsdale Brett, we've got the full name calculated. Uh, we need to have an email address in there, so that's brett at lightningtools.com. Company is Lightning Tools, etc. So, uh, so we can fill out those fields. We can also fill out the billing address fields and add any notes on these, uh, these other tabs here. Uh, but what I'm going to do is also, before I do that, add some orders. So I'll click on to uh, New. And notice the new form pops up for the orders list, which of course we could also customize. And in here we just have, um, what did I buy? I bought uh, an excellent permissions management tool called DeliverPoint. And so just got that DeliverPoint purchase. There we go. And DeliverPoint is the product. And the value is uh, 1000. So we'll save that. So we can see that 1000 being written there into the orders. The total value is 1000 so let's go through and add another one and another one was we also want a lightning conductor which is a content aggregation tool let's just do this there we go and that is also a bargain at $1000 so we'll uh, we'll hit save so now we have uh, two items in here with our running total of 2000 on the form itself so now I hit save and you'll see that the uh, the first item has been written to the contacts list here in the background. Save is taking a little while longer because we told it to delay, display a success message, and in a moment I should also get an email. But uh, let's just um, hold fire on that one. Uh, as I go into site contents, we can go into the orders list and here in the orders list is two orders. And uh, we can see that they're deliver point and the lightning collector and the, uh, the, the running total uh, is also there as well. OK, so that's how you can customize forms with lightning forms uh, while still maintaining that modern design. You're not customizing a modern form and um, ending up with a classic looking form that's not responsive and so on. We're keeping that responsive design for you and it's uh, very, very easy to go through and customize it. So if you'd like to download a trial, uh, feel free to do that. You can uh, download the trial from this page um, or uh, give us some feedback on um, brettatlightingtools.com. Many thanks.